So we begin this edition of the Sportsmax Zone with football. Following multiple reschedulings, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Federation will have their elections on Thursday with five men vying for presidency. The elections were set to be held last November, but were changed initially to earlier this year, but now to the 21st of March after FIFA recommended constitutional changes be adopted before a new executive council is in place. After a visit to the Islands Federation, FIFA's Chief Member Associations Officer, Kenny Jean-Marie, insisted that the recommended guidelines for new statutes and a revised electoral code be completed by the end of 2023. The five men in contention are incumbent Carl Dixon, who will be challenged by former President Marvin Fraser, current Vice Presidents Otashi Spring and Wayne Grant, along with former national player and senior men's team manager, Renson Haynes. Now joining us for a chat ahead of the election, election is Roxel John, who is running for second vice president on the slate of Marvin Fraser. Roxel, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Uh, great to have you on. We have spoken on this issue um, several weeks ago, and we are now revisiting this, this story because the election is pretty much at our, our doorsteps. Can you, first of all, Roxel, address what we just mentioned about FIFA intervening and uh, reckoning that there has to be some changes being adopted before the election is held? Can you take us through that process? And uh, if the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Federation um, followed those instructions? Hey, good, good afternoon, Lance and Mura, and thank you for having me on your world-renowned uh, Sportsmax Zone program. Um, well, to be quite clear and frank uh, off the bat, uh, these are statutes and constitutional changes that were over, over, overdue. They were um, required to be done a, a number of years now, and um, leading up to the elections, FIFA definitely ensure, w wanted to ensure that we did not go through another a few years without statutes change, constitutional change, and yes, um, eventually, um, after some pushing and prodding, um, those statutes and constitutional changes were implemented, and now we're in a process where we can go forward uh, with the elections, as you have uh, correctly said, that were put off twice already. Yeah, can you talk to us quickly about the issue of slates, though? Because I remember late last year there was a recommendation or, more accurately, a, a proposal from FIFA not to go the slate route. But as I see it, uh, the slate route is being used here for these upcoming elections. How do you explain that? Well, actually, Lance, it's vice versa. In the statutes that were adopted and or possibly, uh, as I, sh I should say, offered to us by FIFA, they, re they recommended that uh, we go through these elections with the use of slates. Now, I believe uh, from FIFA's um, estimation, they would have uh, thought from looking at the MAs across the world that it may be easier for slates to carry out mandates. And we're talking about slates who are, who are like-minded, who have the same vision, um, same energies, and, and understand what is required to push the product forward. Uh, um, in, in all essences, this is probably what FIFA wanted. Sometimes it may work in some jurisdictions. It may not be ideal in other, uh, other jurisdictions. But the affiliates, uh, uh, when it was proposed uh, with, the with, with the statutes that, that came to us, um, the affiliates did not agree with that because the perception was that there are individuals uh, who individually can make a collective group and, and, and carry football forward. Um, in, in the case of Marvin, Fra Marvin Fraser and our team, we propose, we are still proposing that we go forward with our group because uh, what we have seen and uh, what we are seeing, um, Lance, is, as you said, you have five members running for the, the post of presidency, three of whom are on the outgoing executive. So, so take that into context. Uh, a, a president and vice president, the, the top-notch brass of your going executive, all running against each other, which tells us that there's something wrong, there has been something wrong, and this has led to probably the position where St. Vincent Grenadines football is at this stage. So we are still pushing the slate, that is Team Fraser, because we want to make sure we go forward with individuals who are like-minded, with quality vision, who are professionals, and take and who can take St. Vincent Grenadines football in a new direction, a positive direction. Yeah, in a moment, I'll try to get from you the pluses of your slate and Marvin Fraser 
um, going up for the presidency and you're a part of his slate. But a quick comment here on the fact that you're, you're a practicing journalist. I, I gather that FIFA has no restrictions against um, uh, journalists being involved in, in this kind of administration of, of their sport, um, which makes it OK, I guess. But is, right. has that ever been an issue for you? Would the football public in St. Vincent and the Grenadines be embracing of a, of a journalist being a, a vice president of, of the football federation there? Because you know what our job is. Our job is yes. to, to, to uncover stories and to uh, advocate truth, righteousness and, and accuracy. And uh, there is a potential conflict of interest if you're involved in unless you won't be a practicing journalist when you, if and when you get the, get the position. But there, there is an issue there that appears questionable to me on the outside of it. No issues one at all, Lance, because this is just, by the way, my, my major um, breadwinner so part is basically a sports coordinator at the St. Vincent Grenadines Community College. I'm also the associate's degree in sports sciences coordinator, a new program at the college where we are embracing athletes and trying to give them an, an opportunity to push forward. So, so journalism isn't a major aspect here. And I, I don't see it as a, a, a factor whatsoever because we, we, when we do our jobs, Lance, we do it professionally and we, we say it as it should be said. We are fair and we are kind. And I do not think and do not see this being an issue. What I see, I do, is a plus, a definite plus in terms of communication. One of the issues that we've had uh, with the outgoing executive, communication with the affiliates, communication with the, the, the corporate body, com communication with the, the Vincential public, um, information being disseminated late or not at all, and that kind of stuff. So in, in, in this profession and, and, and this aspect of my life, so to speak, I can enhance that product if uh, given the mandate by the affiliates. Right. So we touched on improving communication if, of course, elected into office. What are some of the other areas you feel that this current administration has not explored and has not done their best and you and your team, again, if elected, will be working on? Well, well, well. There are so many. There are so many areas that we need to to to, to get on board with, um, Mariah, as we look into these elections. Um, St. Vincent Grenadines football needs to be professionalized. Uh, we definitely need to to look better uh, to the public. Um, our competitions are seem to look very normal. It, it there is no senior uh, distinction between a club, a, a, well, a league, a major league. Some of the major leagues are very, very well organized, and sometimes our own national leagues. Don't, don't look that way. Uh, we have to have a proper grassroots prog um, program. We have to involve the schools and have a proper school program that can add and, and, and lead into the national product. Um, there must be administrative development. Uh, it's, it's been a cry. It's been a cry in terms of what comes out of the office. Uh, we have quality individuals there, but are they guided? Are they, yeah. are, are they given the, the, the opportunity to develop? Are they given the support that is required? Uh, technical development, listen, Tion Gordon has been trying his utmost best. His technical staff has been excellent. They've been trying very, very hard, but they have not. And I say it with no uncertain terms. They have not been given the support that they require to take the St. Vincent and Grenadines product forward, the football product in this case. He has developed and he has been trying to develop the Vinci way. And that Vinci way has been um, been retarded in, 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 in getting the route needed to go forward because they are not getting the support. Educational support is required. Our national teams need more support. I heard you yesterday speaking about the female um, entity of, of Jamaica football and what is required to get them back on board. That is quite similar here in St. Vincent Grenadines. We have a number of national, um, past national players and, and, and female players in the diaspora who refuse to come back to St. Vincent to play under the administration that are outgoing because they are not being treated well. Yes, we need to know that we, we have to apologize for what has happened and take and take it forward. We have to now create a better environment between these players and, 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 and let them feel a part, the cooperate body. St. Vincent Grenadines National Football do not have a, 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 
a sponsor, a corporate sponsor pushing, pushing this league. We have lost individuals and sponsors who were part and parcel of the product. Now we have to reignite uh, and, and, and encourage them to be back part and, and, and parcel of this national product. The game of the people has spent uh, by one of our past um, football enthusiasts. It's no longer right. that. It doesn't have that effect. And so we have to create that and other stuff. We're also looking at a technical center, um, a technical uh, development in the technical center. We, in our long-term plans, we are also looking at a semi-professional league. We must, we must look at a grassroots program that develops the youngsters all the way through. And we talk, we we, we also had uh, ideas of infrastructure yes. um, development as we go forward. Yeah, and you know, most times when people come on this show before they're elected, they have a lot of plans. It sounds beautiful. But talk to me yes. about what this team, Marvin Fraser, has that can get corporate St. Vincent and the Grenadines to, of course, support their ideas. Because we know without money, it's very, very difficult to, of course, get any plan into action. So what does this team, Marvin Fraser, have that can get people to support? So Team Fraser, if, if anyone in St. Vincent and Grenadines will tell you Team Fraser has quality. Because on a daily basis... The eight members of Team Fraser, we contribute and we maintain high levels of, of professionalism and quality in what we do on our daily job. And most of us are involved in, in, in sport. We have a very clear vision. We, we have very high integrity. We are hard workers. We, 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 pu we push to make sure things happen and we're very professional. Let's, let's look at it. We can yeah. break it down very quickly. Uh, Mr. Fraser, he has he was in the presidency for 15 months, and that was when football was on the lips of every single Vincentian. I'm not saying the football football family only. Every single Vincentian, because football took off and was growing. It was great. Yes, uh, Rohan Thomas Jr. He was the manager of the senior team where we were doing really, really good in yeah. the 2019 campaign. Remember when we when we almost got to the Gold Cup? He was in charge of that. I, should I talk about Roxel John? Sports enthusiast, development. I'm talking about. I'm about development. I'm about professionalism. I'm about the given opportunities. Uh, Lance, you get you get my reports every single day after after a, 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 a day in the field at the community college. Roxel, we, we don't see that very often. So we we have the quality to push this product forward without any doubt. Right. And were you involved with cricket at some point in time? I'm a sportsman all the way through. So, I was involved in it. I coached the national teams to, to championship honors. So give me whatever you want to give me. I represent St. Vincent in the best way for the best possible results. Right, because earlier today in my research, of course, before I came on set, I was, you know, trying to get a background about you. And one of the articles that, of course, came to my attention was when you were assistant manager of the under-19 team. And yes. that did not end too well. Do you think that would, of course, affect you going up now in any way? Not at all. Not at all. What, what has happened over uh, those years, I resigned on principle. And uh, this is one of the things that we, we are, we are um, advocating, integrity and principle. And once we stand firm to our morals and our values, there's no question about it. People, of course, St. Vincent Grenadines have seen what I've done uh, for the St. Vincent Grenadines Community College sports program. They see what I have done um, with, with all other organizations to which I've been involved and, and connected to. I have an excellent rapport with all of the associations in St. Vincent cordially or even further than that. So that's not an issue. Um, we have a quality. Uh, when it comes to professionalism, I don't think there are many who can class with what we have offered and we are going to offer and we are offering the affiliates. We have quality. We're telling the affiliates, give us the opportunity to put that quality not only in our daily lives, but on football. We need to move football forward. And this is what Team Fraser is offering. Yeah, Roxel, I you just referenced it just now, the fact that there were times a, a couple of decades ago when St. Vincent and the Grenadines football was significantly stronger than it is today. You're currently right. ranked, I think, 173rd in the world, which is like seven spots below your or above your lowest ever ranking. So you're in the, the bottom part of your historical rankings. Your highest ever ranking in world football would have been 73. So we can see that you're about 100 places below that. Um, what has gone wrong over that time? Because that highest ranking, I think, happened in 2007. What has happened during this period? Um, to 
plummet St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, football to the position it is in at the moment. And what specifically are the things that your team would want to address in trying to rebuild it? I know you touched on a few just now, but if you could be a little bit more specific and a little more hands-on with exactly what the plan would be. All right, so, Lance, I'm happy you said that because I was in Jamaica in 2008, and I'm sure you remember that, when St. Vincent Grandies defeated Jamaica for the first time. I think we were the first Caribbean country to defeat Jamaica in Jamaica in about 21 years, 23 years, 2-1. I was the manager of the national team. And we had a proper, a proper structure. We had people who were fully invested in the product. We had players who would give their all. Since then, we, we, we had individuals in positions that did not pro build on that, all right? We, we, ha we have had chops and changes in terms of uh, um, head coaches. We have had changes in philosophies. We have had um, problems with, 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 with stipends for players. We have, we have had administrative issues. We have managers resigning and short term. And so there has not been a pro the progress that is needed for St. Vincent and Grenadines football to go forward. And, and you know, in societies like ours, it is important for us to have some sort of continuity, but we need to go in sync with the rest of the world. There's no modernization in our sport here. We have not involved technology as we should. The biomechanics, uh, the, the study of the, the athlete, the, the nutritional values. We still have athletes coming off of the, off of the, the job and, and going to train for two hours after, after, after a very long day of work. And we have to change this. We have to change this. Other Caribbean countries around us have, have gone the way of, of, of employing a, a pool of players. We need to do that. And one of our major, major lands, major projects is the center of excellence, where we are going to, in, in the long term, probably the, the, the third or fourth year of our uh, tenureship, get this thing running, where we can engage all age groups. We're going to have to start with a pool, but we are engaging all groups, the elite athletes in all groups of our footballing program into a project where they are actually coming to the technical center. They're studying, they're playing football, they're playing football as their livelihood so we can have that quality pushed and pushed forward daily. Not, not in the afternoon for two hours or not for two months just before a tournament. So we have to embrace this. Technology, quality individuals. We have coaches who are budding, but we have to advance them even further. So the, the movement has to be professionalized and advanced with technology and, and the support and dedicated people who are offering to football not taken from football. Yeah, Roxa, we have a, a lot more to discuss on this St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, Football Federation election coming up on Thursday. Um, stay right where you are. On the other side of the break, we'll pick up the discussion. Back in a moment. Yeah, we're back on the Sports Max Zone and we're talking football here. We're discussing the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Football Federation's election scheduled for Thursday. Roxel John, candidate for the post of second vice president, still talking to us on Zoom. Uh, Roxel, you mentioned earlier on when you were talking that um, the fact that so many people in the current executive or the outgoing executive uh, challenging for the presidential post suggests to you that there is discord and um, confusion, which I'm, I'm taking to mean that you are you and your Marvin Fraser um, slate would be trying to steer the public into your direction because you're trying to steer them away from what you suggest is, is a confusing situation. I'm not sure if we'll get Carl Dixon, the current president, to speak with us on the show because uh, I see a trend where a lot of these presidents in the Caribbean Football Union don't want to talk to the Sports Mac Zone. It's the challengers that are talking. Um, we had the Jamaica presidential election a short while ago last weekend, and the president, Michael Ricketts, didn't talk to us on the show. Um, there is a Barbados Football Federation or Football Association election coming up, and the current president, Randy Harris, says he will not talk on our show. He, of course, is the current CFU president as well. 
and um, our production team would be reaching out to Mr. Dixon. But I say that to say that the politics of football is well documented. And for the most part, the people who are in control have the tools to ensure that they can they take care of their delegates, the, the, the delegates with voting rights, to ensure that their position is safe. Um, how confident are you that Dixon does not have the confidence of the voting delegates and that he will lose Thursday's election? Um, Lance, the world on the ground and the, the football-loving public are in a position where they, they, they want to see change. This yeah, is, but, this is yeah, not... yeah, but admittedly, Roxel, they don't have votes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Because right. in Jamaica, right. I can tell you in Jamaica, if the public had votes, there's no way Ricketts would have won the election on Sunday. He would have lost, <laughs> and, and he would have lost badly. And that's a fact. But, they, but oh. they don't, the, the common man in the street doesn't have votes. It's the delegates that have the votes. So you telling so me that the St. Vincent and the Grenadine football uh, fans... Um, are dissatisfied with Dixon is neither here nor there because they have no votes. Totally agree, but but let's look at it. We are now we we are now separating votes between four or five major individuals, as you as you put it there. All right, you have you have the group who are, are definitely gonna support T. Marvin Fraser. There's a group that's definitely gonna support um, Otashi Spring. There's a group that's definitely going to support um, Mr. Grant. And, 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 and to be honest, um, there, 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 there are some who are going to support Mr. Dixon. But in, in, in the general context of things, the affiliates, I believe, are unsatisfied. They're unhappy with what has transpired over the last four years. Um, we, we're still waiting. And I, 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 I reported on this. We're still waiting to see the 10-point plan that was offered by Mr. Dixon. All right. He has done some work in terms of putting the finances together, and we, we applaud him for this, and, and putting things in place as it should be, uh, as it relates to uh, the finances of St. Vincent Grenadines Football Federation. But what has happened to the product of football? It has gone spiraling in the wrong direction. So people are unhappy. Remember, the affiliates love to see football. We want to see football. And the product on the field of play is basically what pushes us. And you can't tell us that you have finances and you've put finances in the right way, but our teams are suffering to participate in competitions. We are looking unprofessional and disorganized in terms of what we do from the office. And so I do not, I do not think that the affiliates are, are, are going to give Mr. Dixon another opportunity. And, and, and we are quietly confident that we, get, we will have the support of the affiliates. We have pushed our programs. We have given them a proper manifesto, well-detailed manifesto. And we have gone on five weeks of an online platform where we have spoken about all the items in our manifesto in detail, um, even engaging them in questions via call and or, or questions on the site via messaging so that they can be clear. All right. We have done that. We have done that. And we know that the, 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 the affiliates are happy. It is going to be a close election, but we are very quiet. We are quietly confident that the affiliates are, are going to be pushing for a change, a change towards, that will lead towards Marvin Fraser's led um, uh, slate. Right, and Roxel, Marvin would have held this position before. So, of course, people would have gotten the opportunity to see what he's capable or not capable of, right? What do you think, Correct. what do you think, based on his first attempt at the job, why would people give him another opportunity because you know when you've held the position before they would say okay you got the chance to see what you can really do what from his first uh, hit at the position will put him in a good running to get a second opportunity let's remember that uh, mr fraser got up to the presidency based on um discrepancy between the incumbent well the, the president then mr coombs and fifa so M mr fraser had to finish uh, the, the the tenure so to speak of of that administration in those 15 months mr fraser wrote the most projects ever in the in the lifetime of an S svg football federation executive mr fraser put football back on the mouth of every single Vincentians. If you were Vincentian, you would have heard and you would have remembered the slang. Football taking over. Publicity. 
engagement. The Victoria Park was rum. People were doing well. Uh, all entities wanted to be part and parcel of the product. St. Vincent and the Grenadines were doing well. We were on the verge of what? The Gold Cup qualification. We beat Suriname in Suriname, the first Caribbean country to do that in 21 years. So these are some of the things. And even the affiliates. Remember that election went, I, I, I believe, if, if, my, if my memory serves me right, 25-23. Many of those 25 who voted for Mr. Dixon are now and have been saying, boy, we made the wrong decision. And now they are obviously trying to make that decision correct by putting a proper slate to run St. Vincent Grenadines Football Federation for the next four years. Yeah, Roxel, Team Fraser, really. Ro Roxel, a lot of administrators are judged by the product that they govern and the performances and the results of St. Vincent and the Grenadines being as poor as they are now, comparatively speaking to what it had been a couple of decades ago, um, is, is, is making it really clear that things aren't going that well. Uh, can you talk to us briefly about the talent in St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Because from the outside looking in, someone could say, well, in the mid-2000s, you had players like Shandell Samuel and um, Ezra Hendrickson, who were high-quality players that boosted the performance of the team. Um, does the talent in St. Vincent and the Grenadines at the moment support um, a, a, a better look, a better result sheet for the St. Vincent and the Grenadines team? Without a doubt, Lance, without a doubt. We in the Caribbean, you know we have never short of talent, but obviously as the game and sport uh, has evolved, talent is not, would not cut it. We have to put things in place to make sure that that talent is harnessed properly. Listen, we, we've been doing well. We've been doing really well in the, on, on the 20s. We have been doing well um, even, even when it, well, the, the last campaign where we started excellently, um, the three wins on a trot, and, 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 and the philosophy started to go in the right direction. But remember, this could only be sustained if we have the right support behind it all of the time. And, 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 and so we, we continue to be half and half where we are good for the for early parts and we can't sustain that because the guys are not in a proper program. We are not in, involving the technology and they don't have the general support around them to push the product forward. So when we talk about talent, Please, yes, without a doubt, we still have that. It's what is put in place to make sure that that talent base is sustained and developed and, continue, and can continue to grow all the way through. We lose too many players, Lance, when, when, from the under 19s to the senior level, from the under 13s to the under 19s. We have to have something that can keep them building, building on the, the product, the talent, the skills that we see. A lot of these guys sometimes are, are not even in school. How do we help them? How do we make sure that this, this product is incorporated? How do we now have them as, as entities that at the end of their football career, they can still fall back on something else? This is what Team Fraser has in the plan, and we're going to make sure it, it starts when the, when the affiliates give us um, the mandate to carry football back in the direction for St. Vincent Grandins as it should be. Yeah, very confident pronouncements there, uh, Roxel, and you spent the last 20 minutes um, promoting Marvin Fraser's um, quality and his suitability to this, to this job. As we have said before, Carl Dixon is the current president, and we have established that there are five people going up for this position. You, you, you from your standpoint, is projecting Marvin Fraser as your favorite and probably the favorite. Of the five candidates, well, of the four that challenges Marvin Fraser, who do you consider to be your biggest threat? As I said, man, uh, we are quietly, quietly um, confident that the, the affiliates are going to give us uh, the, the nod um, come Thursday. And this is based on what we've done. As I said before, we've gone out and we've spoken to the affiliates. We've had programs. Um, but it's going to be a very close election. I, I, I'm going to say that. And, and at the end of the day, we can be confident, but the, the affiliates have that final decision to make, and we respect it, whether, whether it is for us or not. But I believe uh, when we look at it um, at this stage, in my own estimation, um, Mr. Grant and Mr. Spring could be the two individuals who would probably um, along, well, be close to us in terms of our presidential race um, in this instance.
So Mr. Grant and Mr. Spring Otashi. That's Correct. Wayne Grant and Otashi Spring you consider to be your most potent challengers for this for this job. At this stage, based on, on what we, we perceive, you know, what we, we are hearing, what we have been 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 studying. And as I said, uh, Caribbean elections is, is Caribbean elections. It could be it, 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 people could say in one one day yes. and the next day change. But yes. guess me, there needs to be a change, regardless of there needs to be a change to push this product forward and to change the direction in which we are going. Yeah. Uh, as I said before, Tian Gordon and his technical staff have been working very hard, okay. but they're not getting the support. Yeah. So we need to make sure we have people who understand the sport and the yeah. science of the sport to help him along. Right. And just to be clear, Mr. Grant and Mr. Spring are both current vice presidents or vice presidents of the outgoing um, federation. Um, at what time will we know who the winner is? What time is the election on Thursday? Um, I'm still waiting. Uh, we're still waiting on a document as it relates to what's happening and in terms of the time and that kind of stuff. As soon as that is sent to us, uh, yeah. we will we will definitely inform your most esteemed uh, program. <laughs> Roxy, thank you very much. Uh, really a pleasure talking to you. And I can tell you that I think you have piqued the interest of the Caribbean viewers here on this SVG FF election because it looks hot. Never before have we seen five people going up for the presidential position of one football federation. So this is history in the making, and we look forward anxiously to what happens on Thursday. Thanks, Roxel, and all the best with you and your team and your bid to become the new president, Marvin Fraser, of the uh, SVGFF. Thanks, man. Back in a moment on the Sports Mac Zone.